All right. How good it is to be in the Lord's house on a Wednesday evening. I'm glad that you're here. Steve is going to turn me up in just a little bit. Where you want there? Yeah. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you give us to worship. We ask that you bless in our service, that as we study the Word of God, that you will open our hearts and minds to what you have to teach us. And as we sing praises unto you, O Lord, help us glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. We'll take the hymn and we'll turn to page 483. to walk in those footprints. Amen? Amen. Take your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 13. And we'll begin our reading at verse number 11. Notice what the Bible says here. And that knowing the time, that now it is half time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting 
nor drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Look at verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Break it to our hearts and teach us those things that we need to know. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, my friends, we live in a society that is seemingly enslaved to time. Amen. I've titled this message, Get It In Gear. Get It In Gear. There are companies who have their sole purpose to make time-saving devices. Today we have laptop and table computers, cell phones, not so many people use pagers anymore, but I can remember using the old pager. Amen. There are calendars, planners, Something to always keep us on schedule. Amen. I get tickled from time to time when somebody calls the house trying to schedule an appointment. The first thing that Marla will do is say, well, let me get my calendar. <laughs> we live by that calendar. It makes you wonder how in the world anybody ever accomplished anything in years gone by. Part of the reason that we're so enslaved to time, I believe, is that sometimes we try to do too much. We're pulled in so many different directions that we aimlessly move from one demand to another. It's a must that we determine the things that are most important. And that is what Paul is saying in our text. There are four things that I want you to notice in this text. First of all, the greatest thing that you and I can do is keep perspective. I guess I could say we better keep ourselves focused. Understand the present time. Know what's going on. The text says we need to wake up. Recognize the present time. I don't need to tell you because you know it as well as I do. We live in a very hostile world. Amen. Satan's dominion. The values of our society are not the values of the kingdom of God. You and I need to understand this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. But we're living in a time when it would seem that some believers are in a coma. And Paul in the text is crying out, Wake up! Amen. Live with new urgency. This could be the day that Jesus comes again. Before we finish this message, Jesus could come. We need to take time to spend more time with God. We need to take time 
to spend more time doing kingdom activities. We need to spend more time sharing Christ with the lost, those who know him not. We need to spend more time loving one another. The Bible makes it clear by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Amen. The second thing that I want you to notice in this text is not only do we need to stay focused or keep our perspective on the Lord, but we need to get dressed. Paul uses the metaphor of changing clothes. He said we need to change from the deeds of darkness to the armor of light. To many believers, they're still running around in their pajamas instead of the whole armor of God. We have a declared faith if we're saved by the grace of God. We have a sure salvation, but many children of God are not dressed and ready to go. We need to understand that we are living on borrowed time. Amen. Jesus Christ could return at any moment. Now, I know some will probably say, I've been hearing that all my life. I've been preaching it for 40 years. Amen. Somebody would say, well, that's a long time to preach that he's coming again. My pastor preached it for many years before me. My great granddaddy that was a Baptist preacher preached it a number of years ago. But I'm going to just go ahead and say this. It's 40 years closer today than it was when I started. This could be the day that Jesus comes again. So friends, we need to stay focused. Then we need to get dressed for battle. And then thirdly, we see in this text, that we need to act appropriately, behave decently as in the daytime. We need to live in His light. Others are watching you whether you believe it or not. Your life is the only Bible that may be speaking to them. Do they see Jesus in your life? We need to get rid of cancerous behaviors. Amen. Get rid of drunkenness, immorality, debauchery, dissension, and jealousy. To get rid of sin, we must be immersed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I must put on several things. Can I tell you what we need to put on? Bring it on. Number one, we need to put on the holiness of Christ. The Bible says holiness without no man shall see God. So we need to put on the holiness of Christ. The second thing that we need to put on is the beauty of Christ. The third thing we need to put on is the humility of Christ. Be humble in our spirits. Then the next thing we need to put on is the purity of Christ. Pure and undefiled was he. And then the next thing we need to put on is the compassion of Christ. And then the next thing we need to put on is the wisdom 
of Christ. The next thing that we need to put on is the forgiveness of Christ. I'm glad that he is a forgiving Savior. Think about that. I didn't deserve to be forgiven, but he forgave me in spite of myself. Boy, I'm glad he did. And you and I need to have that same type of forgiveness in our hearts. Not holding grudges or malice against any man, woman, boy or girl. But having a spirit of forgiveness. And then we need to put on his righteousness. You see, our righteousness won't do. The Bible says as righteous as we can be is like a filthy rag. But if we put on his righteousness, that is good righteousness. And then we need to put on his zeal. And then we need to put on his patience. Now, I've got to confess, there are times that I've not been a very patient person. You know I'm telling you, you know I'm telling the truth. I've walked in a restaurant before and ordered my food and it never, ever, 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 ever seemed like it was going to get there. I've stood in line at a store that had 25 cash registers with two open and the line all the way to the back aisle. The line was all the way to the back aisle. And I was so impatient that I called the head of the company. You know how much good it did? And what's sad is the lady behind me, she said, Preacher, the Lord's teaching you patience, isn't he? I felt like crawling under a shelf. But we need to put on his patience. Well, I'm glad he was patient with me. And then we need to wrap ourselves in his love. What kind of love did he have? The Bible said that he made this statement, greater love had no man than this, than the man lay down his life for his friend. He said, ye are my friends, stretched his arms out on the cross and died there just for me. That's love right there, amen? amen. We need to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ early in the morning. And when you do that, you'll be well dressed for all day long. The whole armor of God speaks to Jesus Christ, every piece. 
And then the last thing that I want you to see in this text of Scripture is that we need to think correctly. Paul concludes this portion of Scripture and tells us that we don't need to think about how to gratify the desires of our sinful nature. There are two dimensions to this command. What are they, preacher? Well, number one, Paul is saying to us that we don't need to waste our time on these sinful things by even thinking about them. And then secondly, Paul is saying thinking sinful thoughts leads to acting sinful. Now I've got something that I call this kind of thinking. What do I call it? My wife knows my sermons well. Whenever we get so wrapped up in thinking about these sinful acts, we don't have godly thinking but we're immersing ourselves in stinking thinking. And stinking thinking will work you over. As believers, you and I have an obligation to ourselves and to the Lord Jesus Christ to guard our mind in our way of thinking. If you'll think about Jesus and his life, the goodness of Christ will fill your mind. But if you get all this other stuff on your mind, it'll pull you away from that. And we don't want that. Now, I'm tired of the message, get it in gear. And that's exactly what you and I as children of God need to do. We need to get our walk with Christ in gear. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering, why in the world, preacher, did you title this message, get it in gear? I got to thinking about my granddaddy. Granddaddy Buford Shifflett. Granddaddy had an old Ford truck. And sometimes it was a standard ship. You pull it back towards you and drop it down, it was in low. You shift up, it was in Suffolk. You shift down, it was in high. If you wanted to back up, you pull it back and go up. An old standard ship. Sometimes, when he was teaching us boys how to drive, we'd get in that old truck and we'd go to shift them gears and it'd get stuck in neutral. I'm talking about the lever would get stuck. And there was no way we could get it in gear. Granddaddy would have to go outside the truck, raise the hood, and reach his hand in there and move something or other around to get the truck to go in gear. I learned a valuable lesson one time that he was doing that. I was pulling on that lever and it pinched his finger. I won't tell you what he pinched. But whenever that thing would get hung up like that, the motor would be running. But you couldn't go nowhere because the truck wasn't in gear. Too many Christians today, as bad as I hate to say it, are stuck in neutral. 
It's time, church, to get it in gear. John McCoffer said this. We must wake up. The downgrade is a dangerous place to be. You and I cannot afford to be indifferent. We cannot continue to pursue pleasure and self-gratification. We're called to fight a spiritual battle. And we can't win by appeasing the enemy. There's a needy world out there that must be confronted with God's message of salvation. And there's little time left, MacArthur says. So get it in gear. Have a proper perspective. Get dressed for the battle. Act appropriately. And think correctly. And you'll have it in gear. And you'll be able to make a difference in this world. Time to get it in gear for the glory of God. Any comments? No stinking thinking. That's right. No stinking thinking. Godly thinking in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the study. We ask you to bless it and use it for your glory in our lives and help us Lord to get things in gear so that we can make a difference in your world in Jesus mighty name Amen